I was born in 1938, which is a long time ago. And it was about seven or eight, just towards the end of the war, when I got into maths. Totally accidentally, because I met a fella in a pub. In those days, they had children's rooms because people worked round the clock and, and took, all went out with the kids to the pub to relax. Chap came up to me. I lived in Bristol. So he said, here, how was your maths then? Me and my dad. I said, all right. He said, how was your multiplication? I said, all right. He said, shall I show you how the Russians do multiplication? I said, if you like. He said, come here, come here. He says, say you want to multiply nine times 13. He said, you write them sideways like that. And what they do, they halves and doubles everything. So what we're going to do is half nine. So give me half a nine. I said, that's four and a half. He said, four and a half. Oh, hang on, he said. The Russians have purges, things they don't like. And one thing they don't like is fractions. They ate some. So we'll scrub that out, call it four. Half a nine is four. Half a four is two. Half a two is one. That's one side. Now what you do, they said, is you double the other side. So two thirteens, I'll do it, you tell me if it's right. 26, two of those is 52, and two of those 104. And now we got four each side. Now there's another purge the Russians had. One thing they really couldn't stand, worse than fractions, they couldn't stand even numbers on the left-hand side. They couldn't avoid them. Well, let's have a look. Well, that's odd, but that's even. So out goes the whole row, gone. That's even, out goes the whole row. That's odd. So what you've got left, you add up. 13 of four is 17 plus 100. And would you believe nine times 13 equals 117. And that works with any numbers every single time. I want to see it again, Johnny. I want to see another example. <laughs> so? Can we do another one? I'll give you, we'll do it the other way around. It doesn't matter what numbers you use. We'll do 13 times nine. Half of 13, six and a half. Forget the half. Half of six, three. Half of three, one and a half. Forget the half. Two nines, 18. Two 18s, 36. Two 36s, 72. And we got four each side. But there's an even one here on the left-hand side. So that line goes out. And now when you add them up, 117. And 13 times 9 is also 117. Triple figure, quadruple? Any, any figures you like. I tried to trace this back. And I found it's very difficult because people in rural areas, before schools, in Victorian times and long before that, used to use this. In Elizabethan times, we know they used it. This system of doubling and halving but I traced it back even further. I traced it back to about four and a half thousand years ago in Egypt, and they did it a slightly different way. So let's say you want to multiply nine times 13 again, all right? What they would do is write the 13 down, and here they'd write a one, double it, two, double it, four, double it, eight, double it, 16, Stop. We don't need 16, we're only multiplying by 9, so we've got enough. So two 13s, 26, two of those 52, two of those 104, okay? They were told there's only one way to make 9 from these numbers on the left-hand side. And sure enough, it's 8 and 1 makes 9. So out goes that one, and out goes that one, and 13 and 4 is 17, 100, and you've got the same answer, 9 times 13 equals 117. That was the Egyptian method. Now, can we link this very old mathematics to the present day? Yes, we can. Let's do this one. Let's score the ones we used with a one and the ones we didn't use with a naught reading up. And what you would get is one, naught, naught, one. And one, naught, naught, one is the binary number four, nine. Why is it the binary number? Because it's made up of an eight, and a one. Binary numbers work like this. One, two, four, eight. One is there. Two is one of those and none of those. Three is one of each. Four is one of those and none of those. Five is one of those and one of those, a four and a one, and so on. And here, eight and one is nine, and that's the binary number for nine. The binary number for 10 would be one, zero, one, zero, okay? And that would give you eight and two is 10. And sure enough, 10 times 13 is 26 and 104 is 130. So all this ancient maths is linked to the very maths 
that makes our computers work, our televisions work, our satellites and everything else. Digital information is what makes the world go round today. This episode was supported by Brilliant. I'm a big fan of their daily challenges like these. You should really go check these ones out. But to get your teeth into more binary, have a look at Brilliant's beautifully prepared courses. Now, Brilliant's not all about what you get right or what you get wrong, although I do prefer getting them right, if I'm honest. They're much more about getting smarter in a way that's enjoyable and engaging. There's lots on the site you can look at for free, or go along to brilliant.org slash number file for 10% off their premium subscription. That unlocks all the good stuff. Brilliant.org slash number file. There's even a link down in the video description if you don't want to type it in. It's quite amazing. You take, you want the binary number for any number. Give me a number to find the binary number. 20... Nine. 29. Right, 29. Are you ready? The binary number. Half of that is 14 and a half. Forget the half. Half of 14 is seven. Half of seven is three and a half. Forget the half. Half of three is one and a half. Forget the half, right? And the binary number for 29 is one, 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 not that one, because it's even, one. One, 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 not one. So if you want to find the binary number of any number, you write it down, reduce it by halves, forgetting the fractions, score the, the numbers one or zero going up, and that will be the binary number for any number you choose. It's so simple.